Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Are you ready to do some fun crafts today? I hope so, because we're going to do some. All right, so this these are grapevine balls, I guess they're called, or vine balls. Um, you get them at, I don't know, I've seen them at, I think, Hobby Lobby. These came from Dollar Tree. I bought, actually, a box of them, and they're all assorted. Uh, different colors is white, light brown, and then there's a dark brown, and uh, there's a large and a small size. So uh, they, you, there's no picking it. You just get what you get, and I, that's fine because I just put them together, and this is what I'm doing with them. So I have some fairy lights, a few strings of them that I get, and they come all wrapped up like this. And I unravel them, unknot them, whatever needs to be done. And then what I did was, uh, well, actually before that, I picked out what colors or color that I wanted my lights to be for the balls that were on them. And so this one I'm going to do in dark. So we're going to just kind of take one of the lights, bend it a little bit, and find a small hole uh, just barely enough room to stick that uh, light in there and we're going to hot glue it right into the hole. Now the string that these lights are on is wire. I know that they have some that are coated with a uh, like a, a, a coating over the top of the wires and I'm pretty sure that the hot glue would probably melt those so just be careful of the type of lights that you get. I will put a link down in the description of the ones that I buy that are the wired ones so that you can go ahead and glue those up and not worry about anything melting. So um, these balls stay on very well. If you think that they're not going to, you're worried about it, you could always use some floral wire and just cut a piece and stick it through and, and uh, tie it and knot it so that it will stay. But I've had these all over the place and put them in my booth for sale and nothing has fallen off, fallen off yet. So um, these are so cute and add so much to a display. So a month or so ago, I went to the Lancaster, New Hampshire yard sale at the fairgrounds, and they there was a booth there that had, or a table that had these um, graters. They're black. They're from, um, oh darn, I can't remember. I'll put it down at the bottom of the screen when I figure it out. Uh, but they are from a, a popular tin wear company and uh, I they were three dollars a piece and I was like absolutely I'm buying those so I decided I wanted to use some of this ribbon I got this off from Amazon uh, it was a three pack of this color the red and black and then I think it was the white and black uh, and so I got it last year in a deal if I can find the uh, link to it I'll put it down in the description as well um, and I really love this. It's wired, nice wide ribbon. And so I wanted to use that on this grater. Actually, I did two of them up the same way. Uh, you could always take some of those little rice lights and put those down inside and just have the, the little piece uh, outside that you turn it on and off. And you could have a cute little light there. Um, I've made them with the Christmas lights that you'd put in a window. Uh, just the one little candle and those work really really well also So I just made a regular little shoestring bow and because it's so nicely wired I just puffed it right up and maneuvered it the way I wanted to now to add some Some more to this cute little grater. I decided to take some Dollar Tree uh, picks that I had and uh, this hydrangea piece and just kind of put all these together um, and make a little tiny little bouquet of flowers um, and to put down inside there to make it look really cute. I really love how this came out and um, I hope you like it too.
This burlap coffee bag is uh, a flea market find, and I've used a bunch of it, actually. It was a very big bag uh, for a bunch of different things. And today I decided that uh, I, I used enough of it that I want to make a pillow with the front and what's left of the back on it. So I'm going to cut it down, and this is going to be a more horizontal um, pillow, so it's kind of like a back or a body pillow. Uh, I think it would go awesome on the back of a couch or something like that. So what I'm going to do is just fold over the edges about, oh, a half an inch, just to give it a little bit of a hem. I'm using just regular hot glue for this. This isn't something you're going to want to throw in the wash anyway. Um, it's just for decor, really. And I've done a bunch of pillows and a bunch of material like this, and it all has stayed. So I'm not really worried about it not staying together. I think it'll be just fine. I've had some pillows for years that I've done this to, and it works great. So I did both ends of this just the same way, just a, like a half an inch in, folding it over, gluing it, and then just taking out all the loose pieces. Make sure if you do something like this that you pick it up uh, often to make sure it doesn't glue itself to the table or whatever you're gluing on top of because it will go down through the threads and it will stick. So here I'm just doing the other end, and then I turn it inside out, right sides together, and I'm doing the bottom portion of the pillow to close it up. I really like the ends of this, um, this material. It's got stitching on both sides, and I wanted to keep that. Uh, I think it looks really nice. So I'm just going on the inside of that stitching, and I'm hot gluing that in so that that just stays, uh, that sticks right out nicely. And of course, as you saw, I popped that back the right side out and I'm just gluing down those edges. I'm going to keep the other end open because I'm going to fill it with some polyfill that I have. Uh, I found a couple bags of it at a yard sale a long time ago and they've just been sitting around and I'm finally getting around to using them. So using things out of my stash, which is good. So after I glue it together, I go back through and make sure my seams are together the best that they can be so they don't come apart. I use a lot of glue for this uh, just to make sure that it stays. I tuck my hand way down inside and get those corners popped out and uh, just make sure everything is all together and lined up. And there's my big bag of polyfill. And I'm just going to use my hand and tuck that way down inside and get those down in the corners the best that I can and fluff that up. I just think this is a really cool rustic country looking pillow and it's going to look great even on a covered porch or something. Uh, if somebody has like a day bed or a long um, something to sit on outside, I think it's going to add quite a bit to it. So again, just doing the other end, closing that up now that I have my stuffing in there and going on the inside of that stitching so that will go together and stick out. And it just kind of has a natural curve to it, which I really like. I think that looks so good. This is the piece that is left over from the burlap coffee bag that I had in the pillow. So I'm going to um, take it and use it. I don't want to have it go to waste. So I want to make a couple little kind of bowl fillers or shelf sitter pillows with crows on them. I'm going to use my 
mesh crow stencils that I had made. My friend Tracy and her husband Dan made for me and I'm still using those off and on. I love them as long as I keep them clean and uh, you know dust free and let them dry nicely they go back to being sticky and they work great. So I'm just working down the sides another I don't know quarter of an inch just giving it a little hemline so that it doesn't unravel these burlap uh, this burlap material likes to unravel and you'll get strings and all kinds of stuff and come unraveled. So I um, like to clean those up. Now this one had a little rip on one end and it had the tag. I'm going to leave the tag and leave that right on the outside. I think it looks really cool. I don't remember what it says, but it's something about the coffee um, coffee bag that it was in. So I really like it. So I'm just taking some fork folk art paint if I can say that and some sponges I finally bought some sponges uh, I didn't have any when I stenciled uh, last time with uh, some of my other stencils and they didn't come out so well so I'm going to use my uh, sponges and just sponge on some black paint which I get very messy but that's okay it's part of having fun with crafting is you get paint on you you get messy it washes right off and you move on to the next thing. So I'm just taking one of the crows and putting that on there with the star and then the cool thing about this is I can peel it back and see how well the paint has gone on. If it's not enough I can go back and do it again or if it's just right it comes out pretty much like that. It looks really cool like that. I am going back through with a little bit of uh, black paint and just highlighting some spots that I wanted a little bit darker. And I'd like to put a string attached to the crow's beak along down to the star. So I'm just taking a fine brush and making the string go up through his beak and doing a little loop and right down to that star. Pretty simple. I'm not a super artsy drawing painting person, but um, I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, it came out pretty cool. I like it. So once it was dry, I took my smaller crow stencil that I have and I wanted to put seeds on the top there so it looked like a little uh, bird feed bag that said seeds on it. So this didn't come out as well because my sponge was just too big and I didn't want to get a bunch of black paint all over the bag. So I just went in again with my tiny little brush and just touched up where I felt like it needed to be a little darker. My ass did not come out at all so I could see just a little outline and I was able to follow that so that I could put in the S and make it look nice and say seeds. So I did two of these bags. Um, this one is the the first one and then I did another one. Uh, so I'm just Again, gluing down the edges and then going up the side. I kept the top open so that I could put some of that polyfill in there. I made sure as I was tucking that polyfill in, I just put it down in those corners and get it way down to the bottom and make it nice and fluffy. And it didn't take a lot to do that, of course. And then I just glued the top closed with a little bit of hot glue. I decided I wanted to put some ribbon and a button on the top and I didn't have any black buttons so I found one the size that I wanted and it happened to be hot pink of course. So I'm coloring it uh, just some folk art black paint giving it a coat and then drying it a little bit and then I did touch it up a little. I did flip it over and do the other side in case uh, you could see it. Um, I just want to make sure it's fully covered. This, These buttons are just a little container I got from Dollar Tree. It comes right up front right by the registers um, and they're all different sizes and colors except for black or I used all the black <laughs> one or the other. So I'm just taking some homespun material and cutting it. I ripped a 
skinny piece of it and uh, now I'm cutting it down to smaller strips I don't know they're probably three inches or so and just overlapping them and having them go in different directions this is just gonna be like a messy bow um, that I'm gonna use this is some raffia now raffia you can use it all closed up the way it is or you can open it up and it's like thin thin paper and I just opened it up and then ripped it down into strips to lay on top of my material and then I took another piece of material and tied the middle of it together so it would all stay together nicely. I trimmed it up just a little bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and glue it to my little pillow decor and then I will add my little button. I hope you liked my projects today. Leave me a comment down below and tell me if you have a favorite. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Have a good day.